Good afternoon everybody, it's time for your studio painting update and daily ramble number 26. Today I wanted to, um, oh the last few days, sorry I haven't been around, I've been organising my studio, um, creating a new studio area within the larger studio, so we've got one part designated for painting and studio stuff and the other part is just a nice empty space now and I'm planning to you know, just have a couple of chairs in there where we can sit and chill and relax a little bit and have a cup of coffee, whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm in a kind of a tight, it's about one, about one and a half metres wide and about four metres deep. So it's plenty of room for my painting. And um, yeah, it's quite a nice little space. So, and I can keep all the clutter on this side of the divide. Um, yeah, so today I decided I wanted to get back to simpli simplicity and the basics. And I've been concentrating on um, more complex and larger still lives. And today I just wanted to give a bit of a rest from that sort of work and I just wanted to paint something simple, something loose and something that will take me back to the basics. And so I decided to paint some wattle. Uh, there's a wattle tree growing up the road. I'm not sure what species of wattle it is, but it's got these beautiful long spear-like silvery grey leaves and these lovely little puffs of lemon yellow. Uh, so I, I kind of um, borrowed some of that, <laughs> if you like, and I set up a really simple subject uh, and I uh, had a, a little bit of a different palette than I usually have. I usually would have burnt sienna on there, but unfortunately I used up all my burnt sienna and yet to get some more. So I had to use raw umber um, for my dark dark areas and I'm, I don't use raw umber often. In fact, very rarely do I use it anymore. But I have a whole tube there and I thought, well, that's going to have to do. So what I did with that, it, to kind of just warm it up, because I find raw umber can be a rather cold colour, but to warm it up, I um, added a little bit of um, cerulean blue, which I find is a lovely, lovely warm blue, and a nice greeny warm blue, and um, I threw some orange into it. There's a good trick to remember with your colours. Uh, orange fixes everything. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, try it. Next time you're having trouble with the colour, throw some orange in it, particularly your shadowy colours and things like that. Throw some orange in it, and, you know, I bet you it'll work. So, yeah, so... That's pretty much um, uh, what I've done, and um, I'll swing the painting round, and we can have a look at it and and discuss that and see what you think. So there it is, there it is, the whole thing. I think I got it all in. Yeah, so there you see a very simple, sunny little subject. Um, painting is always about capturing the light and that's what I really intended to do with this painting is just focus on something small something simple that wasn't going to challenge me too much and just capture the light I literally only worked on this for an hour and a half that's all it took me it's a 10 by 12 um, painting so it's just a nice little study size uh, so looking at the um, the wattle itself you can see just a beautiful sweep of, of the wattle going through there. Now it's important when painting wattle is, as I said, is not to get all dotty. You don't want lots and lots of dots anywhere and quite often people make that mistake because that's what wattle is made of, is lots of little yellowy puffs all over the place. Uh, but what I've concentrated on here is more masses, masses of different tones of yellow and um, big areas, big sunny areas, and then I've just suggested here and there, you can see just a suggestion, nothing more of some dots. Uh, remembering dots on the shadowy side are going to be, um, or any, any mass on the shadowy side is going to be a little less bright, but it's always nice to throw in a few highlights amongst the shadows as well, and in here, a nice little highlight in there. And as usual, I can't resist by throwing a few little things on the um, on the on the table. It's kind of come my signature thing now. I just do that with every floral. I can't help it. I like doing it. It's a lot of fun. And uh, and that was today's exercise was just to have fun with this painting and and not to get too. Um, not to get too precious about it, I just wanted to get a quick little painting out. And of course I hear you say, is it for sale? Of course it is. And um, all my paintings are for sale. Uh, and all of my wattles have sold in the past. So, um, yeah, make me an offer. <laughs> I would like to know. Um, so there's the painting. I hope you like it. And um, I'll be doing something very similar again tomorrow. I'll be doing a few of these. And they're always good to have in stock when um, when sales pick up and, and people just want to buy some small work. So it's 10 by 12 inch. So it's a beautiful little size. So back to me.
So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you liked the, uh, the painting. And um, I'll be doing, um, I want to concentrate on a little bit of an exercise um, where uh, you can see me mixing colours. Because a lot of people ask about colour. And that's one thing they get really stuck on is colour. I'd, I'd rather them get more stuck and concerned about um, tonal value rather than colour. Um, but, you know, colour's their thing that they have, they struggle with. And, and I can understand why, you know, everybody's got a different recipe for the colour as well, you know, so um, mine may differ. But, you know, colour's not the be all and end all of a painting. And I've repeated this and I'll repeat it again that um, tone does all the work and colour gets the credit, you know. So without having nice tonal values, um, you wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It'll look flat, you know, and um, it wouldn't look exciting, no matter how fabulous your colour was so that, that's coming up and um, and we'll also as we're coming into the flower season of course um, there's going to be more and more flowers so you're going to start seeing me painting more and more flowers over the next few month, weeks months you know and um, right up until the um, the rose season which is of course everybody's favorite is roses everybody wants they want to say I want to paint a flower and so what flower do they choose a rose please do not do that <laughs> do yourself a big favor don't choose a rose very complicated flowers to paint but once you break them down and you understand them they're they're not as complicated as you may think um, but when you're looking at them for the first time and um, you've never painted one before, you're going to find that there's a lot of different things involved in painting a rose. I would suggest for a bit of warm-up exercise is do a still life of some fabric with lots of folds in it because you'll find roses exhibit the same sort of conditions um, the way their petals roll and fold and layer over each other um, so painting painting um, um, some fabric folds of fabric um, you can paint hills in a landscape and, and petals on a rose so and, and 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 clothing you know all that sort of stuff it's amazing what that lesson will teach you so that's about all so today that's enough of my ramble if you like and think this is worthy make sure you give it a share and hit that like button of course you can find me on youtube facebook and instagram and if you have anything to say any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and have a good day thank you